Okay, we're going to walk through Learning Activity 9, where we're going to do a currency converter here in Flutter. Uh, so this is kind of basic currency converter. We're just going to have a text field with a value. We can enter a button to convert that to euros. And likewise, down in euros, I have a text field. We can enter some values, convert, and that'll update this uh, value here. So that's our, our general idea uh, here. Um, so, first thing we want to do is create a new Flutter app. So I'm going to run Android Studio. I've got the Flutter I'll plug in installed. I'm just going to do a new Flutter app. Say next because SDK should be set uh, there. Give it some name. Remember your name has to be lowercase and underlines only uh, for this. So I'm going to call this Flutter Currency 2022. Um, change your org or package to CSS dot whatever uh, here. Switch this to Java. Unclick the iOS um, here, and then we'll be set to go for this. Finish this up and let it create the package. Again, once the pack, once the app is created here. Um, we want to open up the main folder here, which is your app name. Go in there, find the lib folder, and open up main.dart. Uh, you can close this readme file if you want. Uh, we don't need that open. Okay, here's our main.dart file. And again, let's kind of walk through. We do an import. We have the main, and inside main, we're running an app called my app. And so we're declaring a class below that called my app. That's a stateless widget, and we have a constructor, and we have a build method. The build method returns a widget uh, here, and it sets up the material app uh, for us. We set up some theme stuff, which is fine. We can leave that uh, there. I'm going to just delete some comments here to make this a little smaller, just so you can see it on the screen. Um, we set the title uh, of this app, uh, and then we create a My Homepage app. Uh, here and we specify a different title <laughs> so um, that we're going to use uh, for that. So this My Homepage app is a stateful widget down below. So it's a new class called stateful widget. We need to do this because our widget is going to be updating the screen, changing how things look, and that has to be done in a stateful widget. So, and this is, we'll, we'll do this a lot. We'll create a stateless widget and uh, set up the material app, but then as the home thing, we will create a new widget, a new class, uh, that'll be a stateful widget. Again, we have a constructor here, and again, this is kind of just uh, standard boilerplate code for the constructor. And yeah, I'm going to get rid of this for now. Uh, this is where our code, so this is where we'll, we might declare some variables here. We're passing in a title variable in here and setting it here. Um, uh, but the main thing we're doing here is um, overriding this create state uh, method. Uh, where and we we make a new class uh, state page here um, that extends the state uh, for this um, and and this has this is not quite a widget this is a, a state uh, that would contain a widget like that um, so um, this and again we'll often do this stateful widgets have to have this state class so we'll often leave this alone uh, here now. Gen and then we'll have some variables here. Now these are this is where we actually have the variables for our activity. Most of our stuff will be in this final class here. Uh, generally, uh, we couldn't have variables up here, but we often don't use them. In fact, this title is passed in here, but I don't think it's ever used by this app. In fact, we could get rid of this title uh, here and not pass it in up here also because I don't think it's ever used uh, for this. Okay, so. This, where we're extending the state of the app, is where we're going to do it. And it, it will be code here where we can define uh, variables, we can define uh, methods. And the main thing we're going to do is override the build app uh, here. Let me just clean out some of this. We're going to override this build app, uh, which is where we're going to build our app, uh, our our widgets so it is going to return a widget so the first thing we have to do is to return and our main widget is often going to be a scaffold widget so we're going to do that and inside the scaffold widget we can specify things like the app bar the body which will be the heart of our widget and uh, things like the floating action bar for this so I'm going to delete some of these comments again 
so we can see this a little better. So again, much of this boilerplate code we can leave. All this code here, uh, creating the stateless widget, the build active stuff there, we can leave the stateful widget. Um, and then the final class uh, that builds extend state uh, here, this is where we'll actually be doing all of our coding this within this. And much of it will be within this build class here. Um, and we'll set up our scaffold for that. So let's look at what we're supposed to be doing here. Um, so again, this kind of lays out this basic structure, and there's a nice video that kind of walks you through this here also. Uh, this is a nice YouTube channel put on by the Flutter team uh, for us to look at. Um, now we're going to build the AI. So inside the scaffold widget, the app bar is created, displays the title, determine the title, um, and change it to, we're just going to use this flutter currency converter so we're going to change the title of our app there so again inside our app our scaffold inside the app bar there will be a title and right now it's using the widgets title uh from up here i think it is actually pulling that down uh i'm going to change that and i'm just going to specify a hard code text uh here so let's put oops yeah let's try that again and put a quote there. Okay. So I'm just going to specify that uh, for this. Now, I could have, I guess, just as well gone up here and specified, let's see, where's the title pa variable pass from one place to the other? I think it's grabbing um, not that title, uh, but this title here. We could change the title here for this, but it doesn't matter that much. Okay, so we've done that. Um, Find the two text widgets inside the scaffold widget, uh, inside the center widget, um, and here, which contains a column widget area. So that's where we're going to look at. So here, so like we've got a, uh, in the, inside the body we have a center, and inside it has a child as a column, and then the column has some children, and these are the text widgets. Uh, and this is the heart of the app. If we look at our app, uh, this would be the, the main center part of the app is this children here. So we're just going to delete those uh, ones and make some more space in here. I guess I need one more line here. Oops. So right now we've got a center widget, a column widget. We specify some alignment stuff and then we specify the children uh, with a bracket. And this is where we're going to put our children inside this uh, area here. So, uh, replace the two text widgets we just deleted uh, with a text widget that displays dollar. So, I just need a text widget there. Uh, oops, where was I? And I want that to display the word dollars. Um, and so that will be my first widget. And then, what else do I need? I want a text field. So a text field is like an input field. Well, let me input some values. So we haven't looked uh, done that very much, but I'll put that in here. And um, now the text uh, field is going to need a variable uh, called a controller that's going to be needed. So we're going to specify uh, that. Let's, let's wait and do that a little later, how about? So we'll leave that uh, for now. Um, and then we're going to specify a elevated button, which is a, uh, the standard button that you're probably used to seeing here. Um, so elevated button. So again, every time we specify a widget in the children here, we specify the name of the widget, the text, or you know the parameters. We end the parentheses, and then we do a comma. So that way, we can just keep adding more widgets here. Now, elevated buttons giving us some inf issues, so it requires a, a on a child uh, object, and it also requires an on press. Um, where does that, will that show up? Alt enter. Okay, well, let's see that in a sec. So for the child uh, here, the child is going to be another text widget that's going to con uh, display convert to euros here. So um, the child here will be a text widget and it will have convert to, convert 
two euros as the text for this uh, stuff. Um, so yeah, so now hopefully it, at some point it should be saying it, it needs an on-press uh, widget here. I'm going to move this around and try to get this to. Here's my warning. Uh, on-press is needed. So it's it needs a on-press uh, so buttons are going to need two things, a child of what, what is actually going to be shown in the bu button, and an on press, which will be uh, some code to run when this button is pressed. We'll just leave that code blank for now. So um, we've done these. Uh, now we're basically going to... Uh, so that takes care of this, this, and this. Now we're going to repeat it down here, basically the same thing again. Uh, with euros. So we're going to add oops, another text widget that says euros and comma and then we need a text field uh, and again we're not going to specify anything for that yet um, and then an elevated button. And again, if I just start typing elevated button and hit enter, uh, it should fill in this stuff automatically for us uh, with some things. It sometimes doesn't do, do it quite perfectly. Um, so, and again, I like to break these up on separate lines. So we have an on pressed and a child here. And our child is going to be a text widget that's going to be convert to dollars and for on pressed, we're going to just do some uh, blank area where we're going to do so. So it's not going to take any parameters uh, here, and it, this will be where the code will show up later on. Okay, so that's our general layout of our uh, area here. Now, if we have that set up, hopefully we can actually run this and see how it looks. Uh, so again, we hopefully we have our phone plugged in and we can run it. And remember, the first time you compile and this, it's going to take a while for it to build the first time. But again, hopefully then with hot reload and or, or just rerunning it, uh, it will be a lot faster. Just, just be patient. I'm going to pause this while we wait. So now it's built. Um, and so here's the general idea. We have uh, dollars, a uh, spot to enter, some numbers here. Uh, a button we can click, uh, euros, and then some, again, number, we can enter some stuff and convert. But again, the buttons aren't doing anything, uh, but that's the general framework uh, that we have. So let's add some stuff there. So again, this is our general layout that we have for this. Now we're going to add some, car, uh, some code to do the conversion. The first thing we need is we're going to need some uh, controllers, some variables to hold our text uh, fields. So every time you have a, like an edit text field, um, let's see, what are they called here? Um, yeah, a text field here. Uh, we need a variable to hold that value here. So we go up here uh, inside our our main uh, home state here. So not not way up here in our uh, my homepage staple widget class, down here in this class. Um, which is the class that we're basically working in. And we're going to declare some widgets, um, I mean some variables uh, here. So these are going to be uh, text editing controllers. So we're going to call this text edit controller constructor. We're going to return a value here. We don't have to specify the type. We're just going to declare these as final um, because we're not going to be resetting them. I mean, we are going to be resetting them, but they're always going to this. We won't be calling another constructor, uh, so be using the the stuff. So this is the only time we'll be calling this constructor uh, and setting them that way uh, for this. Uh, so um, we declare. So we want one of two text fields, one for the dollar text field. So that's now that one, the dollar text field. Now we have to go down here where we find our text field. So we're saying dot. So that's this text field here. Uh, 
this value number numeric value or you know it, and it's going to bring it in actually as a string so this field here so again i can hit um control space if i want and it will list out the different options and one of them is a controller and then i have to paste in my controller here this has to be that uh variable from up here uh, so again anytime we're working with a field where we're getting some values or storing stuff we need a controller which again is a, basically a variable uh, that will handle the input or store the input from that similarly for this euro one down here for this text field we also need a controller and paste that in there okay so those are our two controllers uh, values uh, that we've declared now we're going to need some variables just to do this um, so basically what we're going to be doing is, um, let's see, we'll enter some number here. Uh, that's actually going to be stored as a string, so we'll have to convert that from a string into a, a, a number like a float. Uh, then we're going to have to convert that from dollars to euros and then format that as a string to be displayed down here. So in order for that to work, we're going to declare a couple variables, uh, and we're going to use these doubles, um, which are like floats that are more accurate for dollar amounts. And again, we're going to put them in the same uh, spot up here where our controllers are uh, for this. So we're going to have one called dollars to store the dollars, one called euros, and one called conversion rates. Uh, here and so now we're going to use those so let's just see how we could use this dollars uh, variable so down here when we have the dollar amount we have our controller here and when they press the button we want to do some code there so let's put some code here for the on press button uh, and this is what we're going to be doing uh, here the first thing we're going to do is parse the dollar field uh, here so let's look at what that does um, so we're going to store in our dollars variable we're going to go out and get the dollars uh, this controller and get the text so we don't say get text we just say dot text will get us the text from that and that'll be a string and then we can have to convert that into a double so we'll say double dot parse and give it that string and store that in this double variable now you may be wondering about this underline here why is there an underline for that uh, here and why is there underlines under a lot of these variables um, so in uh, dart we don't say private or public here if this is a internal variable a private variable for this class we simply start it with an underline so underline our local variables private variables to this class uh, here so that's why all of these have an underline uh, to them I think these could probably be underlined too but I didn't set it up that way so okay so that's um, set up here um, so again w when you press the button we convert this to dollars now once we have it to dollars we want to figure out our euros so what are euros uh, euros are equal to the dollars times the conversion rate times like 1.2 or whatever conversion rate is um, we're going to store the conversion rate in this conversion rate variable here and use that instead okay is that what I told you here okay convert one currency to other euros equals dollars times conversion rate that looks right that looks like what we're doing here um, and then the last thing we want to do is put this value into the other text field so we've taken this now we want to update this text field now what so what is the variable that holds this the controller there so that's this euro text field so we're going to do euro text field and we're going to set its text equal to and that's what we're saying here um, so set the text so euro text field dot text equals and then this is how we can do a simple format of that uh so we can do so we have our euros variable which is a double we can say dot two string but we're actually going to uh, not want to do a little formatting so we're going to do dot two string as fixed and specify two decimal places here 
So hopefully this will, uh, our dollar button now will be working for this. So now if we go over to our app uh, and convert this, it should take this value and convert it to euros. And again, notice I didn't have to run this because hopefully hot reload, I was talking and slow enough that by the time I got over here, it had already updated it uh, for that. But now this, if I get rid of this, this one doesn't work, so we have to do a similar thing here. Um, and that's what what this is, that's our next thing. Uh, code the, the buttons uh, for both. So you can go through and do that. Um, why don't you pause the video and just do it yourself uh, here. So on press set, set up here. Okay. Okay. So, and I'll walk you through in case you don't want it to pause and do that. So I'm just going to take that code and move it over here. Um, instead of dollars here, this will be euros. And again, we're going to swap and get it from the euro field here. So I'll get there now. Here we're going to get this dollars, and we're going to convert euros divided by the conversion rate instead of times the conversion rate. Um, and then the result we're going to set up in the dollar text field here, and we're going to make sure we convert the dot the dollars to string okay so let's see if that makes sense we grab so this will be the euro button this button down here to convert to dollars we're going to take uh the euro text field up here uh parse it into a double and store it here now we're going to take that divide it by the conversion rate and store it in our dollars variable now we're going to take that dollars variable convert it to a string uh and do uh, with only two decimal places uh, there and then save that to the dollar field, which will put it up here. Now, once I get that code and uh, if I've talked long enough now, I can click over here and it's automatic already been updated for that. Okay, so that's our general layout here um, for our main app uh, for this. Now, we're going to try a couple bonus things uh, here. So you may notice like the, the strings here for these dollars and euros are rather small, so we can specify uh, some style for them. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to go here. So here's the, the text for the dollars. I can hit comma and specify style uh, for that. Um, I can break this up to a couple lines if I want. Sometimes people like to do that, uh, do something like that, um, which fine. Uh, similar down here for euros, I can specify the same formatting for that. Um, so I'm using a theme called the headline for theme uh, for this uh, stuff. So I'll leave this in one line just so we can see the two different things. Now I've come over here, you can see it just got updated dollars in euros uh, for that. Uh, stuff. You know, you could do the same thing for the buttons if you want. You could uh, add in our elevated bu button there's a text field and we could add some formatting to that if we wanted uh there's lots of formatting you can do i'm we're just going to do the bot uh, some basic ones um the next thing we're going to do is move uh maybe our code into a, another um uh, a method uh here so we've got this code for like the on press button we're going to go up here so right, well first, let's go, we're not using this increment count anymore. There was this increment count uh, method up here. And you notice that it is a method and it does something, but it also has set state here. And we'll talk about that in a, in a sec. So I'm just going to delete that. We're not using increment count and we're not using this counter anymore. Well, actually, I think we might have been using it in our floating action bar. We're going to delete our floating action bar because we don't need that anymore either there so that gets rid of our floating action bar um down at the bottom here okay so now we're going to add some new method up here um so we're going to do uh, what i keep wanting to write java here um yeah we're going to call this like convert to dollars void underscore convert to dollars Uh, as a method and again uh, by putting underscore that means this method just private just used in this class here and then we're just going to take this code that we used copy it or cut it out of here and put it up here 
And then we're going to call this method uh, where that code was. Uh, it's going to need a semicolon here. So now when we push the button, it's going to call this method up here. Now, this might run actually not work because of this thing called state uh, here. So if we enter in some new values here, um, and hit this, um, actually it is working because I'm, I'm running in an emulator where if you run it well on a phone, sometimes this might not work depending on how the state is set up. So generally what we want to do is surround this with this set state uh, method. So one thing I can do is I can just highlight this code here, go to context help and say um, surround with set state and it'll put the set state around that code. Uh, for us. And again, generally it, the safest thing is anytime you're going to um, update the, ver the, the, f the form, uh, you know, the look, anything has to change as far as the widgets go, you should be putting that code inside a set state. That means it does the code and then redraws the widget for us uh, here. So similarly we can have another method. So we did that for this convert to dollars. We have the same or slightly different code for convert to euros here. Uh, so I could run right, a new code here. Convert to euros. I could actually be writing one set of code where I pass in two parameters and a conversion rate and just do that. But uh, I'm not going to do that. So again, I'm going to go down here, grab this code, cut it out, and put it inside this variable or this function or method I'm going to grab that method name and call it down here put my semicolon after that uh, there and again I'm going to surround this with set state so I'm going to right click and show actions and surround with set state here you can also just type in set state and have autocomplete fill it in and do that so it's not that hard but um, Somehow you want to get set state around. And again, sometimes with linking up the parentheses and these empty parentheses in this bracket, it takes a little bit uh, to get it set up right. Okay, so now it should work uh, both ways. So that's what this does. Another thing is we can just work on some of the formatting stuff here. Um, I don't like this where the dollars here, and the, the, this, I would like it say dollars and then have this text field on the same row. So I want these two maybe on the same row. So I can add a row, like let's go in my app and figure out where that is. Here's my text field, and, I mean my text, <laughs> and here's my text field here. I want these two in a row uh, here. Let's see, um, I can wrap it in a widget uh, here. Um, or I can, yeah, so let's maybe just try that. Um, or let's just do that manually. I'm just gonna say row. Um, and okay and then I need a children app I need my brackets there and now I'm going to move these two things up there inside the row widget. Um, now when the row widget gets done here, I'm going to want a comma because we're also within a column widget here to get our elevated button. I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to indent this a little bit and I'm going to indent this a little bit more too. Okay, so now I have this uh, row and the children are these two text fields. So hopefully then over here, they'll start putting these up. Um, now I'm getting an error uh, here, and so this is a good spot to talk about errors. So sometimes you'll get these errors that are kind of hard. You'll see them in the Run tab down here, uh, a bunch of uh, stuff flow by. You can kind of scroll up. Render paint bot needs layout, needs paint. Uh, render box needs, has size at position 12. And again, there's actually a whole set of these that failed. And uh, it is challenging sometimes to figure out this, uh, where the error was, because I got, look at all these error messages I got here when it's trying to redraw these. We'll eventually talk about Flutter Outline and some things like this, but one thing you can watch is see what was drawn. So it drew dollars and then it got stuck. So uh, it was going 
going through our row and it did this and it got stuck with the text field and there are some problems where some uh widgets don't have a built-in size and some things require a built-in size uh, for them so text fields are one of these that are kind of expandable and so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight that text field and we're going to stick it into um let's put it in a um a maybe a size box for now see if that'll do it um, I think I need that in an expanded one so let's see if that will rerun this and see if that'll work yeah I'm gonna trick this into another widget called expanded and see how that looks there so that works uh, the expanded uh, will expand this to fill the the width of the screen uh, for so that will set a size so again uh, watch that you'll uh, especially when you're building complex things build them up incrementally and watch when you uh, that, that something goes wrong so again I want to do the same thing down here with euros uh, for this so I want to put this text and this text in its own uh, row I'm actually going to do uh, wrap it in a here now so now that I highlighted two of them and did this then I can uh, wrap it in a a row widget uh, for this so now it's in a row widget uh, for us to use um, but again this text field I'm going to put that in an expanded one so I'm going to go and um, I don't see expanded here so I'm just going to put it in a size box and then change the size box to expanded okay and then watch what the layout looks like it should update the layout over here eventually so I like that layout better uh, for this now <laughs> this gets complicated again we've got a center widget we have a column widget uh, inside the column widget we have a row widget and the buttons underneath it another row widget and other buttons underneath it uh, here uh, for this um, one more thing I'm going to stick in here is I want a little bit of space between these so I'm actually going to stick in a sized box uh, here uh, between the two so uh, after this and before the second row starts I'm going to type in a sized uh, box and specify its height at maybe a hundred pixels or something like that and again I get an error here because I'm missing a comma up here so if you go down here sometimes and you get an error I'm trying to display what the error is it'll say missing comma but it's really meaning the comma is missing up here so now it should st stick in an empty box between these uh, once this gets updated so that spreads this out a little bit more okay again you can do lots of other layout stuff we won't get too much into that uh, but we can do some other formatting uh, play with that a little bit so what do you want to submit now you can actually submit this all the githubs if you want um, you can uh, enable version control here um, and say okay you can this will change the version control menu to git you can just uh, share the project on github and push it up on github uh, that's fine and then uh, just share that with me or uh, everything's in this main.dart file so you can just submit the main.dart file when you find it inside your folder it'll be inside the lib uh, folder inside your project folder here so submit one of those okay good luck